confidence. Oh, I love the fact that you raised your hand. Good job. Olivia, what is confidence? How would you describe the word confidence? Um, just like believing in yourself, knowing that like you've got this. Like if you're in the batter's box, like you're confident, you're going to find your pitch and you're going to get a good hit. Right. I love it. Right. So if if let's say Riley was struggling with her confidence, what would you tell her uh, just as a teammate, a friend, a catcher, like how would you build confidence in somebody next to you? To just trust themselves and like to, to trust in all the work they've been putting in and all that the last weeks or just, I don't really know. I got you. How was your weekend um, this weekend? Okay. You did good? All right. Cool. Cool. Right. So confidence is just that, right? It's being able to not only tell the person next to you that, yo, you got this, right? Sometimes we just need that person to have our back. Sometimes we just need that person to be able to say, hey, I'm with you. We're going the same direction. Let's just keep working. Right. But that doubles up and it gets even further along when we can say those things to herself. Right. When we can Take the idea that confidence is not just something that's fixed. Here it is today. It's something that cannot grow, right? I personally believe that confidence grows with experience. As you get more experience, look, everybody's looking. Is that a fill in the blank, right? Every The confidence comes with experience. Confidence is the belief, here you go, in your abilities fueled by preparation, effort, and positive habits, Confidence is the belief in your abilities fueled by preparation, effort, and positive habits, right? So if we believe that that's the definition, right, then the belief in our ability, right? So confidence comes when you put in the work. If you go all week without hitting, then when you show up to that first at bat, after a week of not hitting, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes you may struggle with confidence. Then you get that hit, you're like, oh, okay, I got this. But if you don't, that may build up in you, right? So knowing how to release that, right? If I don't like something, I've got to be able to put it in my back pocket, know that I'm going to work on it down the road, and know that confidence comes from consistent effort, preparation, and positive habits that strengthen belief in yourself. That's the key word. I want you to underline the word consistent effort. I want you to underline the word consistent effort because this is where success really starts to mount. This is where success really starts to build, right? Let me make sure nobody else is trying to get up in here. Boom, right? This is where success really starts to mount and build is your consistent positive effort towards yourself, right? Because if I get frustrated, if I get down on myself, if I get to the point of, I don't know if I can do this, then that's what the brain is going to start to believe. Do you believe that if you go to a hitting coach and they make adjustments in your swing, you can be a better hitter? Hand up if you believe that, right? Do you believe if you're a pitcher and you go to the right pitching coach and you have good relationship with that person and they teach you the right mechanics, you can become a better pitcher, right? So if we believe all of these things and that our brain and our body can be taught, then flip it and become your own teacher, right? Confidence starts from within. It's not just in a box. It's not results. I mean, results can make you confident, but if those results aren't there, then what happens? Fall off the map, right? I, I become a person who's not. So I have to continue to find ways to tell myself that the process I'm going through is going to lead me to the ultimate result I'm looking for. But if you go back to that underlying word are not putting in consistent effort, if you're not preparing every single week, and you're not displaying positive habits that strengthen the belief in who? Hit him with that A-E-I-O-U. That's right, right? So if you're not constantly believing in yourself as much as you possibly can, and the belief in yourself comes from the first three, 
If I work all week really hard, do I show up normally to the tournament feeling good? Right? Like I've had good results in practice. My throwdowns have been on point. My drop ball's been fire. My base running has been great. I hit 15 home runs off the tee. Like I'm showing up feeling good. Right? And if I don't put in that preparation, then I'm curious as to if I'll do good. And I'm basing it based off all of my results. But I don't want to do that. I want to be able to look myself in the mirror and say, this is a process. Are you better now than you were when you were 10, 11, 12, and 13? And you failed in all of those years, right? At some point in time, but yet we're still progressively getting better. That alone should tell you it's a process. So that means a year from now, if I increase the effort, what's the word? What kind of effort? Intentional, right? I can see y'all moving it. Intentional effort. Because look, if you, whether you've been with me for 10 months or whether you've been with me for 10 minutes, right? Intentional effort is the difference. This is where you make the difference. This is where confidence comes in. If I'm throwing as hard as I can because I have an intentional goals throughout the process, if I'm running as fast as I can down that line because I have intentional goals throughout the process, then I'm going to get better, right? So let's talk about that. Deposit. What is an example of a deposit that you've made recently? Somebody give me something that they've done positive to build confidence for themselves. I can look at y'all and name six because I know something about every single one of you. So give me one deposit that you've made that made you feel confident. Cool. Riley got her cast taken off. Addie played for the first time in weeks, right? Okay. Maddie went in there in Georgia and, and absolutely pummeled it, right? Uh, everybody in here has something that they're working on. Everybody in here has something, right? Like Layla, she's learning new pitches every other day, right? I get a new video of this adjustment, that adjustment. I love it, right? She's working hard every single day. Putting in consistent effort preparation. So if, if look, knock, knock, everybody here, <clears throat> raise your hand if you're here. All right. We all know me and I know all of you. So talk to me, talking to myself in a, in a, in a room uh, of girls that I talk to every single day. Don't be silent on me. I have to like tell funny jokes and sing songs and. I don't know. All right, cool. Withdrawal. Fill in the blank. A withdrawal is any action or thought, any action or thought that drains your confidence. <clears throat> any action or thought that drains your confidence. <clears throat> okay? So confidence is what we're talking about. Here's how I build it. Here's how I take it away. I build it by putting deposits by making positive changes and adjustments, by saying positive things to myself. Piper, I know you just checked in. If you open up the chat box, which is down bottom, there's a uh, PDF file in that chat. You can open it up and follow along. So confidence is what we're going for because when I'm confident, I believe in myself at the plate. I believe in myself at the circle. I believe in myself in any one of the other eight positions in the dugout while I'm going through my workouts, when I wake up in class, when I'm doing anything and everything, because all at the same time, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I tell myself before I even put my feet on the ground is that I'm the what? Boom. If you, if you, if you don't want to say it, everybody pull up your chat and type it. Just type it. That way we don't have to mess with muting and unmuting. Every day when I wake up, the first thing that I think to myself is I'm the what? Come on. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I'm the best, right? But I don't want this to be just a word that you're like, Coach Bill says I'm the best, right? I, I need you to like embed it in your brain. Right? Because if you're not, I always say this, if you're not, what are you? 
If I'm not the best, okay, I'm working to be the best. But the only way I can do that is if I think I'm already there. That's the visualization part, right? If I'm truly engaging in where I want to go, I see it now. Close your eyes right now. Let's play a little one minute little exercise. Close your eyes, right? And think about your next tournament. Think about the next time you step on the field with your team. Think about the next time you step on the field with your bat, your glove, your thought process. How do you want it to go? How do you want it to look? What do you want to happen, right? If you sit there and you think about that process for just a few minutes every day, then you start to feel it. Then you start to want it to happen. Then you start to build a plan, put in the work, right? You start to get those mini little goals that you start hammering out every single day. And then you show up and you see that tenth of a second fall off and you see that ball go a little bit further and you do all of these things. Boom, you're healed now, right? So it's an opportunity for you. You can open your eyes now. It's an opportunity for you to be able to just sink in and really think about where do I want to go? Who do I want to be? And how am I going to get there? How I get there is by making deposits. Right. So let's go and bloop, 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 bloop. Right. So we just did the visualization part. How can a visualization make you feel more confident? Right. So type it in the chat. Everybody want to be silent? Type in the chat. I can read it all at once. We'll make it easier. We'll get more interaction this way. You know what I just found out that I can bring to these things? And I'm going to start it as soon as I learn how to incorporate it. Like, you know, those little like cahoots. Right. Like I can do cahoots on Zoom and we could be sitting here playing mind games for real. Oh, why are you laughing? Why you why are you laughing? What idea you got? Come on. Come with it. Let's go. Type it in the chat. How can a visualization if you've been in my lessons, we've talked about visualization, seeing where you want to go. How can that best help you feel more confident? <laughs> Yeah. Don't give her the answer. Don't give her the answer. Don't type a paragraph. Just give me a sentence. Some of y'all in there writing books. Cool. While you're typing, right? We're going to keep going, right? So how can visualization help you feel more confident? Just hear my words while you're typing. By mentally rehearsing success, you build familiarity. That means an understanding with performing well, making you feel more prepared and confident. Here we go. Let's read a couple. We got some good ones. If you can see yourself doing good, you will start to believe it and then it will happen. It helps you believe that you can do it and shows you can. It helps you see what you are capable of doing, giving you the belief of success. You can visualize success and have a successful outcome. Right. So again, all of these words only mean something if we actually lock into them. So if I know the visualization and seeing something happen before it actually happens can make me better, then do it, right? Do it. I dare you. I double dog dare you to use this tool to get better. Nevaeh says, gives you something to look forward to, right? Uh, so if someone says, so you can see growth in your success. That's right. Go check out your weekend in your brain before it even comes up. And then you can get there and feel more confident that you've put in the work throughout the week, you've done your mini goals, you've got in your lessons, and now I've seen myself actually get it done. Right, Ru says it can help you believe what you're capable of. Faux show. Sure. All right, let's talk about how we continue. I'm still on number two, right? As an example of a deposit you made recently. Deposits are actions or habits like practicing hard, helping a teammate, or setting a small achievable goal. Deposits are positive actions or habits like practicing hard, helping a teammate, or setting a small achievable goal. These are things that are going to help me feel better about what I'm doing. The number one thing that will help you build confidence throughout the week is a strong work plan through or over the weekend, a strong work plan throughout the week. If you want to consistently be the best on the weekend, you have to continually show up to be the best throughout the week. 
All right, now what are some things that take from my confidence? Negative thoughts, skipped responsibilities, comparisons to other people. These all affect the mind. I'm not the number one ranked kid in my class, so therefore I'm not good enough. False. I'm not the number 50 kid in my class, so therefore I'm not good enough. False. Right? I didn't go to my workouts this week. Okay. Anybody ever missed a whole week and then had to show up to a tournament before? Raise your hand if like you've had an injury and then all of a sudden on Friday, your parents took you to the doctor and the doctor all of a sudden said, she's cleared. And now you get to go play the weekend and you haven't practiced all week and booyah, right? So that's, that's happened to a lot of you, right? Jesse, probably the same way at some point. Doc, you sure she? Oh, no, she's good. She'll be all right. Just don't let her do this, this, or this. And it's cool. You go and play, and you get that confidence back, right, after you do it for a little bit. Maybe that first at-bat, maybe that second at-bat, but now it comes back to just like riding a bike if you already have a solid foundation. So withdrawals happen when you allow negative thoughts, skip responsibilities, or comparisons to affect your mind. Part two, deposit or withdrawal. Circle whether each is a deposit or withdrawal. So let's talk about it. Practicing with 100% focus and effort. Would you say that that is a deposit or a withdrawal? Hit it in the chat. Deposit or withdrawal. I like this chat thing. Deposit or withdrawal. Look, Olivia knew it was coming. She already typed it. She's like, got it. Deposit or withdrawal? It is a deposit, correct. The reason it's a deposit is because staying intentional builds trust in your abilities, right? If I am working with intent every single day in order to get this done, in order to get that done, if I'm waking up with many achievable goals, we all have schedules, you all have lessons, you all have plans, you all have things that you need to get done. The attitude and the effort that you take to these things determines whether or not you get to deposit or withdraw. Cool, let's keep going. Thinking, I'll never get better at this. Is that a deposit or a withdrawal? Oh, show, look, y'all are working ahead. Why is it a withdrawal? Tell me why it's a withdrawal. I'll never get better at this. And if you guys just actually want to speak, like we don't have to just type. If anybody's like, hey, I'd like to just participate in the conversation, uh, feel free to hit the unmute button and jump on in, right? But I'll never get better at this. Why is that a withdrawal? Go ahead, O. Just unmute, killer. Okay. When you say, like, I'll never, which is saying, like, you pretty much don't believe you'll ever get better at that, which means you have no confidence in yourself at all. I love that, right? So, so the biceps, they're a muscle, Right? Like they can get bigger if we work them. Right? Okay. The calves, the whole body, right? It's a muscle. It's got all kinds of muscles. And if we work them out, we get better. Right? Hands have mechanics. When I'm swinging a bat, we can get better. Right? Pitching has mechanics. When I'm running, it's all mechanic related. So then, do we practice the brain, which is also an organ? And, 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 and has the ability to grow and learn and change and get better, right? So these tools that, that sometimes can sound like are repetitive and repeating, but we use the same tools throughout a lot of these lessons is because this is the practice. When you go to hitting, right? Hitting is a bat, a ball, a tee, a front toss, or live pitching, right? That's hitting. So we go and we repeat the same things while making adjustments. Pitching, right? It's the same thing. It's 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 warming up. It's doing your long toss. It's doing all of your bullpen catching, right? It's doing your blocks. It's doing this. It's, it's doing your throwdowns. It's doing all of the things that you have to do, right? So while you're doing all of those things, you're getting better. You're building focus. You're building intent. So train the brain, because O pointed it out, she used the right word. I'll never get better at this. This is the problem. If I just remove that word, what's the sentence? I'll if get I better just, at this. Uh, I'll, I'll get better at this. If I just remove 
the thought that I put in my brain and I tell myself, I'll get better at this instead of just that one word, that one word, right? Is like this, right? Watch this. Is punctuation important? Who would agree that punctuation is important? Let me, let me see how close I can get this computer here, right? Let's see. There's a, a light, so I'm going to use this corner down here. See the word? Can everybody see that word? What is, what is that word? Type the word in the box. Look, Nevaeh is like, man, Nevaeh, you like me. You got some big old glasses. It's hard to see, girl. I'm right there with you. That's why I'm like right here, right? Okay, so the word is can, right? Now, Okay, if I'm using punctuation, right, then the word can with a question mark becomes what? Like, can? I feel like a dog, like looking like, can? Like, her? Her? Right? Like, can it? Okay, but if I remove this and I put this, an exclamation point, what happens? Like, it becomes like, can, like, yeah, rah, rah, shishkumba, right? I can get it done. Now, what happens if I put this thing here? What is that? It's an apostrophe for those of you that can't see. And the only thing the apostrophe attaches to a word, yeah, there we go. Look like the box showed up. The only thing that an apostrophe can attach to a word changes the whole definition of it. Right, and this apostrophe is your negative thought process. This apostrophe is your mind telling itself what it can or can't do. And you have the control in your brain and in your mindset to be able to decide whether or not you're putting that apostrophe up there and letting it control you or whether you are deciding that I'm the best and I'm going to put in the work throughout the week and I'm going to bust my tail and the results are going to fall where they may because the more I believe in myself, some of you are putting in the work all week long. I see it. You're busting your butt, right? And not everybody is it turning into results right away. And I'm going to tell you part of that reason is because you haven't bought into you yet. You bought into the system you bought into the workouts, you bought into the intentional effort, but you're still keeping that secret that you truly, not truly, but somewhat still don't believe in you, right? And that thought process of I'm not quite sure yet is that little piece of anxiety that's holding on to you and wanting to take all of that and make withdrawals and make withdrawals instead of making deposits, so let's keep rolling. I know I got a little bit uh, a little bit off track there, but we're going to keep it rolling. But don't let an apostrophe make you who you are. Just get rid of it, right? Because that's not punctuation we need in our life. We want the ability to be able to control the controllables, feel good about what we're doing, put in hard work, make these deposits, and just start getting rich with confidence. Start getting paid with confidence. Cool. All right, here we go. Supporting a teammate during a tough moment. Is that a deposit or a withdrawal? We're just going to say that one's simple. That's a deposit, right? So boom, got that. Why? Because helping others boot their confidence and yours, right? That's what I'm in here doing. That's what you guys are doing every day. I hear you out on the field. Hey, that's okay, girl. Pick it up. We got it. Hey, I got you. I got your back. Don't worry about that. Hey, it's okay. I got you here. Great job, kid. You know, running out, trying to high five somebody after a home run. So you guys are doing great jobs at being supportive teammates. Uh, skipping practice because you feel frustrated. <laughs> Deposit or withdrawal? Look, got some head, got some head language going there. Deposit or withdrawal? Yeah. Definitely withdrawal, definitely withdrawal, right? Because avoiding effort creates a pattern of withdrawing from challenges, right? So if I am going, not going to practice just because I don't feel like it, then when you show up on Saturday and you don't get those results that you want, which may limit your play on Sunday, don't be mad at anybody but the work that you didn't do throughout the week. 
Does that make sense? Got it? Cool. All right, part three, your confidence bank. Reflect, write down one deposit and one withdrawal from the past week. So write it on your paper, type it in the box. Write down one deposit and one withdrawal from the past week. One deposit and one withdrawal from the last week. And then type it in the box. Do you want us to put the dates and like the like the situation? Nah, I mean, you can put as little as much as you want, but just kind of couple couple words, right? Um, how many sheets is this? I feel like I'm missing a sheet. I feel like this is three sheets. It's only three. I know, but I only have two. I'm missing part four. All right, while you're writing, I'm going to find part four. We're good. I'll find it. I'm a survivor. I'm going to find it. I'm going to work harder. I will find it. Y'all better stop. Olivia's always making fun of me. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? I'm just going to click on it and print it out again. How about that? Oh, yeah. Hello, it's your boy. Here we go. Click on it. Print. Print. There we go. Oh, yeah, that quick. Anybody traveling for Thanksgiving? Nobody? Nobody's going out of town? Oh, you are. Kylie, where are you going? You better talk. Don't type it. I'm going to Alabama. I'm Alabama? What's in Alabama? My grandma's house. All right. Grandma got run over by a reindeer walking in Alabama one Christmas day. Yeehaw! Like that? That's a terrible singing voice. I was blessed with the gift of speech, not singing. Singing voice is terrible. All right. So just to make sure I got it here, your confidence bank, why it matters. And then there's, is there another fill in the blank? What did I miss? Where's part four? Yeah, there is. Okay, after that goes to number two. Got it. I'm back on track, Jack. We good. We good. So, grandma's house. No one else is leaving? Cool. Maybe we should have like a Saturday. What's Saturday? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, hey, here's a cool piece of information for all of you in there. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be releasing information for the 2025 Lead Your Journey uh, adventure getaway. I'm putting together as many of you as want to go, right? Uh, we're going to build a team to go play the Thanksgiving tournament in Puerto Rico. So we're going to build a dream, a team of lead your journey kids. Like again, everybody can go. We'll build two teams if we have enough kids, right? And, and we want to take the team, myself and coach Pat will be the coaches. Uh, and we want to go and uh, put together a bomb squad and go to Puerto Rico. And we want to do some in-person training, some practices on the field. We want to hold some parent classes and and then go win the Puerto Rico International Cup and play against kids from all over the uh, Central America. They, they bring teams in from all over. So um, keep that on your radar. Next Thanksgiving, Lead Your Journeys headed to Puerto Rico. So hopefully you all will be able to join us. Uh, and we'll be doing some fundraisers and things like that for those people that, you know, need to raise funds. Everybody, need, I need to raise funds. So we'll be doing some fundraisers and, you know, for those that want. If you don't, up to you. But that's what's coming. So let's keep it rolling. So what are we right here? Let me go through and read some of these. Let's talk about them. Let's discuss them. Let's see what we got. Uh, deposit. <laughs> Love it. Hit over 600 this weekend. You go, girl, with a couple of dingers, right? Um, and and she's not on here uh, right now. I don't think I don't see her. Clark hit her second home run this weekend, so that's cool. Uh, deposit, talking to my pitchers in tough innings. Uh, withdrawal, negative energy from other players. Like it. Okay. Somebody bringing you down, girl? Like, get off me. You better bring nothing but a smile for a while. Deposit. My hitting was a one. Nevaeh, talk about it. What is what is that? What is that like? You had the sauce. What does that mean? I knew you were gonna say something. I told my dad. <laughs> so, um, a one is just something I say. That's like my hitting was like really good. Yeah. Well, tell me about your hitting. What happened? Um, it was at practice today. Um, I hit. So they're the. 
New Tampa Field, so there wasn't a fence, but, like, you know where, like, the ending is because, like, the sticky thing is. And a lot of them went over. Okay. Listen, I, one swing at a time, right? Opportunity. I love that. Okay, withdrawal. Doubting myself for a second after a strikeout. All right, did you play this weekend, Kate? Yeah, I was at the Gold Star Camp. And I actually have something I want to talk to you about. I, it doesn't have to be, like, one-on-one, -on -one, but, like. You can talk about it now if you want, or or we can talk about it after. I'm good either way. Uh, I'm fine with talking about it now. So um, they had a camp on Saturday morning, and um, my coach texted me today that the Kaiser coach, yeah. like, came to one of my games after and talked to my coach saying that, I mean, I, I have the message, but it was saying how she was, like, interested in me and how I, like, stood out to her at the camp and how she invited me to one of their camps. I love it, right? I mean, this is all what we're trying to do, right? This is, this is you know, how we put in that work every day, right? So now your next step, if you haven't done it already, right, is to reach out to her because Kaiser's an NAIA school. You can pick up the phone and call her. There's no restrictions like there is for Division One and Division Two. Like you can send emails, you can drive to the school, you can bring her lunch, like you can do whatever you want. NAI is wide open. So look, again, uh, I'm not saying anyone's passing scholarships out tomorrow, but what a great opportunity for you to go to a camp, right? I'm, I'm assuming, right, you, you went up, you introduced yourself to the coaches, you probably had your profile sheets, I'm hoping, right? And passed things out, had conversations, you walked in with confidence, you felt good in the moment, and boom, now she came and watched you play, validated what she saw in the camp, now I want to bring you to campus, hang out, let's see where it goes. Maybe you're a Seahawk, maybe it's just a visit, doesn't matter. The point is, you're working hard, you're getting recognition, you're finding those moments, what a great deposit for you, right? We were talking, You all, all you wrote was striking out, like I would have been like, deposit, Got a college coach invite. Had I'm a coach watch that my up there. name. Like, did come put on. That. <laughs> like, I would have dropped that hard, right? Uh, but cool. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. A withdrawal is this weekend telling myself I was not going to be ready this weekend to play. Right, and Rue, like, look, I'm going to tell you, like, I apologize, right? Like, I was sitting there watching all the Team Tampa girls play. My phone at 1045 said to me, hey, you got a meeting. And then the game got really hype and things started happening. And then your mom messaged me and was like, dude, like, you missed my girl. She's going to eat lunch. Like, and I'm like, oh, my God. So first of all, I apologize for that. Um, I just got really wrapped up in the game. And secondly, I'll tell you, if there's ever a moment where you guys are supposed to be on a meeting with me, and for some reason, I'm not there and I haven't contacted you. Just call me, message me. There's probably a 100% chance that I got sidetracked or something happened or I silenced an alarm and it's never intentional. So just message me on that Zoom and be like, yo, homie, like I'm sitting here waiting on you, chump. Like get your intentional butt over here so that we can get this meeting started. Okay. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, but... I'm a person, human being, make mistakes. So, Rue, I apologize. Um, either way, what were we talking about? Oh, there you go. You weren't prepared. You didn't feel like you would be prepared uh, for this weekend. So, why is that? Just like coming off out of light, like cast. Like, I had like a setback with my ring finger. Like, it would hurt to do like everything. And then, like, I knew like they were going to be college coaches. So, I was like, I don't want to do bad. And I was like, okay, I don't expect me to like, like hit as well as I did. I was like, this is my first tournament in about a month seeing live pitching and stepping on the field and being able to play. So I was just like, kind of like doubting myself. Yeah, and I mean, that's fair. Right. And, and, and this is, you know, to, to be honest, this is your second shutdown you know, in, in a, what you shut down end of July again, something like that. And, and then in August, and then you came back for a little bit and, and you did well. And, and, and then you, you know, now you've had this shutdown again. So you've had a couple of ups and downs over the last three or four months. Um, but, you know, shout out to you, like, you know, being chased by some guy in a golf cart while, 
you know, doing big sprints, talking about when you were working out with your dad, right? Um, but you, my, my point there is, I mean, you're running 20 miles an hour down the road in the middle of the night with a cast on your hand because you want to get better, right? Because you want to chase, because you know that the goals that you have are bigger than just any one injury and we still have to find a way to continue. Okay, so we felt that way, but then you showed up this weekend and quite frankly you showed out how did it go it went well I couldn't pitch but I played the field did well in the field it surprisingly well and yeah yeah listen, and and you know. the other thing is a mom shared a video of you uh she's like ah you know not bad fielding for a pitcher right like yeah you're a pitcher right like that's where everything I know right parents <laughs> that that's that's but but you're a good shortstop too. Like, I, I don't want to take you out of that conversation. You're tall, you're athletic, you've got a powerful arm. Like, you, you keep working on all levels of your game, even though, you know, your power is in your pitching, but don't, don't, uh, don't give up on, on every part of the game. Does that make sense? Hunter yeah. says deposit, practice pitching, withdrawal, not practicing the day before. Okay. Got it. Hunter comes to us from California. Because they know how to party. Withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. Cool. Let's keep going. Um, all right. Let me get back to the sheet. So coming up, let's go to the second page. Let's go to fill in the blank on the back. Confidence grows through consistent action over time. Confidence grows through consistent action over time. Right? It's the C word, right? Constant leads to confidence. If I'm consistent, it's the analogy I used a couple of weeks ago, right? If I give you a dollar and that's all I give you, then you can't do much with that, right? But if every day I earn a dollar, over time, that becomes $100, $200, $300, $1,000, right? The girl that started playing softball that you were at 8, 9, 10 years old because of consistent practice consistent pushing, making adjustments through failure is now a pretty good, pretty solid 13, 14, 15 year old, 16 year old softball player, right? And the girl that's 14 now will be even better at 18 if she works with intentional effort to be the example, consistently pushes herself to be her best self leans back on the tools that we're talking about now because the 10-year-old girl didn't have these tools. So the 14-year-old girl who is now learning them and has them, she should be able to apply, kick in that extra effort, kick in those mini goals, kick in that long process of understanding. It's not what I do in this moment, but what I do in all moments that carries me to where I want to go. And understanding that when I get there, that's just the bottom of one mountain. Now I got another one to climb, right? Because right now your mountain to climb is playing high school ball if you're still in middle school. Maybe you're in high school ball and your mountain to climb is to make the team. Maybe you see your mountain to climb is to get committed, get a scholarship, whatever that is. But when you achieve that, you're not at the top of the mountain. You're at the bottom of the next mountain that you have to climb because there's still more goals in front of you. I go to college. I'm in college now. That's a whole nother set of goals and things that I have to do. I graduate college. Now I'm in the real life world. That's a whole nother set of things that I have to do. So we're constantly working towards those goals. But for now, we want to recalculate, recalibrate and say, confidence comes from consistency, consistently pushing myself with intentional effort to be the example and be my best self. Cool. So think of a small, consistent action that stacks up into big improvements. We just talked about that. Three deposits you can make this week. So write down three deposits that you can make this week because it's it's holiday week. We got no practice. We got no time. Turkey, we're traveling. Uncle Larry's coming over. I, all these things are happening. Okay. So what are three deposits that I can make this week? Boom, 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 boom.
Boom, boom. So for me, I'm going to finish the Lead Your Journey book. And I want to build out our group. And I want to tell all y'all that you's amazing. All y'all. So amazing. All right, so what did we type some down? What do we got? We didn't type, nobody typed nothing. We just wrote it down. Go ahead, oh, you just want to talk? Okay, hold on. Layla's got her hand. Layla, I'll come to you next. Oh, you go first. Sorry, okay. I didn't see your hand there. Go ahead, oh. So versus to hit every day, and between those hits, think about, like, my mindset, and then to work out every day this week, and then just, like, this week to write down three of my goals and just, like, think about how I'm going to work to reach them. Love it. Layla, what you got? Um, so three goals I want to, well, three things I want to do is, like, like when she said is work out every day, like in the morning before school and everything. Um, my second one is like trying to hit fit like fifth like around fifty buckets of balls off the tee to get a good tee work in, so I can like hit bombs because I've not really been able to do that right now. Love but it. and so my third one is um that I can like tell myself every day that like I got this in that like I I've worked so hard already so I can't give up now I love it and you are getting better every day kid I see it so keep pushing yourself there very cool right so who can you help stay accountable for building confidence right this is another tool that you can use whether it's a teammate uh whether it's a family member whether it's you know your your sibling right I want you to Find somebody that you can help stay accountable and get somebody to help you stay accountable. Trying to do this all on your own, you're not, you, you can get far. Listen, I've done a lot of things on my own, right? And you can get far in life, but also done a lot of things with my great, amazing, beautiful wife, right? And the people around me and the teams that we've built. So you can get a lot further in life when you have accountability partners, right? So find somebody that you trust. Maybe it is mom, maybe it's dad, somebody that can relay positive information to you about positive adjustments that you need to make in order to be able to continue your forward progress. That's where we go. Accountability can come from a coach, a teammate, or a family member who encourages. That's the big word, encourages you to stay consistent, right? Your accountability partner should not be coming to you going, man, you terrible. You better get it together. I can't even believe you still play this game. Stop it. That's not who we're talking to. That person is not somebody we want influencing our mindset and performance. Well, cool, guys. That's about all I got. Anybody have anything for me? Questions, comments, concerns, any last minute what to do's? All right. Well, very good. Rubu, you can stay on. Uh, Kate, text me tomorrow. Let's jump on a call. Let's talk about that visit. Let's talk about what you should be doing next uh, and really help you pinpoint and, and hone in some of those things, okay? Um, schedule your one-on-ones if you get them. If you're in the leadership or the uh, elite development program, you get the one-on-ones. So make sure that they're scheduled and you're using them. Uh, if you've gotten your swag when you're working out as much as you can, wear the shirts, tag them. Um, that's another thing, right? If you're on social media, you know, tag us on social media. I try to share and repost y'all stuff as much as you can. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Great, uh, great reminder there. Enjoy the holiday period. And here's the other thing, right? Like take a day or two this week to rest and recover. Take a day or two this week to think about something other than softball. Take a day or two this week to think about something other than workouts, right? You're 14. Find other things that you like. You're 13. You're 15. Find other things that you like, find hobbies, explore different parts of the world, right? Do something different other than, do something different other than the little yellow ball. That's actually a pretty bright neon green ball, but do something other than that. And when you do something other than that, you will find that you love that even more. All right. So I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. We will talk uh, this week. Happy Thanksgiving. And that's it. Peace out.
and sit 